hello everyone and welcome to another video those of you who are subscribed to the channel you will know i went to see star wars the phantom menace in the cinema last week and it was amazing it really did feel incredible i'm a 90s kid so that movie is so so special to me it was basically my first introduction to star wars i love everything about it the characters the branding the music all of it really makes me feel like special inside it just brings back a feeling that i just can't explain it's nostalgia it's happiness it's feeling like a kid again it's taken me back to that moment in time in my life now this is pod racing i think for a lot of us as well and i don't want to speak for anyone else but this movie was special to us because a lot of us were Anakin's age, so we could really relate to him and put ourselves in his shoes. When he's getting taken away from his mother and he has to walk away from her for the last time, I love my mum. Like, <laughs> I love my mum so much. I adore her. And seeing a boy my age having to walk away from her, never see her again, never speak to her again, I felt that. I felt that in my heart. <laughs> it broke my heart. Like I felt so much empathy for him. And that just made me connect to the movie even more. I just could not imagine going through that. And I felt for him. I really did. I can't do it, Mom. I just can't do it. I think Qui-Gon becomes so important once Anakin has left his mother. Being the age I am and heartbroken when he left his mum and putting myself in his shoes and just feeling that empathy for him. Qui-Gon became the father figure. I felt happy and safe for Anakin when he was on screen with Qui-Gon. You felt like he was always going to be safe. You felt like Qui-Gon was always going to be watching over him and making sure everything was going to be okay. Which then made the duel of fates even more important and heartbreaking to watch. Just that anxiety of wanting Qui-Gon to survive, wanting Qui-Gon to be okay. And the anxiety I felt when he got split up from Obi-Wan and you're desperate for Obi-Wan to get back and help Qui-Gon and for Qui-Gon to survive because you know when Qui-Gon's gone, Anakin's going to be by himself. He's going to be left with Obi-Wan who doesn't particularly care much about him. Why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? The duel of fates for me always felt so scary. You see it a million times and each time you watch it, you think to yourself, please don't let Qui-Gon die. Please, can he just survive this time? We need him. We need Qui-Gon to survive. We've already lost our mother. We need that father figure in Qui-Gon to survive and look after us and just make sure we're going to be okay. And then obviously he doesn't make it and Anakin's fate is sealed in that one moment. But that does lead me on really nicely to the sentimental side of things. I remember being in the cinema seeing that movie I remember having my parents either side of me and to be sat there again as an adult with everything that's happened in between now and then just felt like a milestone. It felt like a chapter in my life had just sort of been completed. I couldn't help but like sit there and think, wow, like so much has happened since I last saw this movie. My grandma and granddad were still alive the last time I was in the cinema watching it. I hadn't been to secondary school yet. I had so many lessons in life to still experience, but that movie always stayed the same. It always stayed constant. It was always a source of happiness and escapism for me. So yeah, when it comes out again in the cinema, of course I'm going to go and see it. Like, I want to capture that feeling again. I want to feel like a kid again and be sat there and just enjoy it like nothing else matters like nothing else in the world matters it's just the perfect escapism I felt so at home and so comfortable being sat in that cinema everyone that walked into the room I just had so much respect for I felt like you're my kind of person I f***ing respect you for coming to watch this movie other people were there by themselves I went by myself the first time I saw it again and then I went with my girlfriend Eve who you probably see in the comments of every one of my videos she's my biggest cheerleader she's amazing she came and saw it with me um, when I went to see it for the second time since its re-release but I felt so at home I felt so comfortable everyone who walked in I could just tell like you're my kind of person you look a similar age to me you were blatantly a kid the same time I was watching this movie and I couldn't help but think like I wonder what we've all been through from between now and then to get where we are to be back here and watching this just escaping together it was just an incredible feeling but that's just me being ridiculously sentimental I don't know if that's normal I don't know if you guys ever feel like that 
Um, I'm quite a deep thinker. I overthink a lot, good, good and bad. But that's the way I thought. And for me, that really enhanced the experience of going to see it again. Another thing I did when watching it, and I don't know if you guys do this, but I was looking around the cinema and just looking at everyone enjoying the movie, seeing what parts they enjoyed. There were two guys sat a couple of rows down from me and every time something happened or an Easter egg came up, I could see him chatting to his mate telling him and that was just so nice to see. Anyway, what I was trying to say is I don't know if any of you guys do this, but I was sat there in the cinema trying to imagine this was me seeing it for the first time. How would I react? How would people who watched the original trilogy react when Star Wars came out like 20 years later? Like the thoughts that must have been going through everyone's head, like, oh my God, is that Obi-Wan Kenobi? Look how young he is. Look at the Jedi. Look how fast they're moving. Obi-Wan isn't moving like an old robot fighting Darth Vader. He's nimble. He's quick. It's insane to watch the choreography. I can only imagine how that must have felt when people saw that again for the first time. When you're used to, you know, the original trilogy and how limited they were back then with technology and the stunts and everything else. And then the prequels came out and you saw the Jedi in their peak. Just the little things like how the Naboo guards are basically slaves to these battle droids. Then Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon come in and they just go through them like a knife through butter. That is the Jedi. That is what they should do. I often think what the reaction would have been like when Darth Maul got revealed and those shutters pull back. And he reveals himself with this double-ended lightsaber. People must have gone wild. <laughs> they must have gone insane when they saw that. I would have, and I did when I was a kid. But to me, that was normal because I hadn't seen the original trilogy at that point. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I love sitting there and just imagining watching it for the first time and imagining how everyone reacted to every single scene. That whole experience of just seeing it on the big screen again was magical. There are definitely moments in that movie that are more obvious when you see it on the big screen. So, for example, the bongo scenes. I felt like I was in there with them when I saw that in the cinema for the first time. I remember sinking into my seat as a kid and thinking, I really hope they get through this. This is terrifying. The water is so deep and dark. There are some horrible creatures around. I just want them to get out of there safely. You really get a good idea of the scale of it when you're sat in the cinema. And then even the tiniest of things. So when they go and rescue the Naboo guards, Obi-Wan Kenobi or Qui-Gon slices a droid in half and he carries on walking. I remember seeing that in the cinema with my parents and thinking, that is so cool. I love that that's happened. Like that little detail is so cool. I've never seen anything like that before. Not to mention the duel of fates and how I first felt when I first saw that in the cinema. Anyway, all in all, amazing movie, amazing memories, amazing experience seeing it in the cinema again. I just wish I could bottle up that feeling and just keep it forever. Yeah, I just, I'm just so grateful for Star Wars. I'm so grateful that I can talk about it with you guys. You have no idea how much your comments mean to me. Um, just like finding people who have something in common with me and then being able to chat with you guys in the comments about it, knowing that you guys feel the same way about the same things I do and you enjoy the same funny things that I do about the movies. I don't know. I just never had a close friend which I could talk to about Star Wars and share all these things with i kind of not forced it but like encouraged my friends to like get involved and watch it with me but no one really loved it not like i did to find you guys now and to share all of this with you is just incredible i can't tell you how grateful i am for you every comment i get it makes me smile and i go straight in there and i reply and i really enjoy building this mini community that we have thank you so much for being a part of it i genuinely am so grateful and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it wasn't too doom and gloom. I'm just, um, I'm just feeling really reflective and I wanted to share how I felt with you. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time. Thank you for hanging out with me. I want to make more of these videos where it's just me and you. And well, I say that there's going to be however many people that watch this over the years. But for now, it's just me and you sort of sat down as mates having a chat and just catching up. And I think Star Wars The Phantom Menace being released in the cinema again for us is quite a big deal. So it was well worth us having a chat about it. Thank you all for watching. May the force be with you. I let go every time I hear those voices